And so my first question is, which ending did you choose? <laughs> okay, well, that's valid because that's what I did. <laughs> I, I think it was very similar yeah. uh, in terms of how it worked out. It's just, I'm not sure exactly what was different except the perception of those who were engaged in it. They all acknowledged something happened that was unusual, but they couldn't exactly put their thumb on what it was, except for the person who was telling the story from their point of view. Um, they were convinced, by the way, in the first ending that Jesus or somebody that looked like Jesus was out there on the water and that he was literally or she at one point was walking in the water towards that figure, not aware exactly how it was happening, but it seemed to be happening until all of a sudden it wasn't. In 1985, a fellow by the name of Robert Funk created what was known as the West Star Institute. And then he initiated uh, a gathering of 50 biblical scholars and a hundred lay people who were engaged in study of scripture. And they called it the Jesus Seminar. Anybody familiar with that group? The Jesus Seminar. And it was intended to, to be a continuation of a search for the historical Jesus, which is something that we've been doing since the historical Jesus ceased to exist among us in one way or another. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I was around when the Jesus Seminar got started. And I read the list of biblical scholars they had on there. And I had my doubts. I really did. Um, and then as they began to make their pronouncements, <laughs> I began to be increasingly concerned about what it was they were doing and how they were going about engaging in um, recovering the historical Jesus. Uh, because the first thing that got my attention was they said, we, we, we reject all of the miracle stories that are recorded in the Gospels uh, because we believe that they are, are simply fabricated. And that if you disagree with us, the burden of proof is not on us, it's on you. So in other words, if you believe in the miracles, any of the miracles, you've got to find a way to prove it to them. And I thought, well, that... <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like one of the things I learned in the 90s when I was uh, doing some game development was learning the rules of game development. There are rules for every game that you play. If you've played Monopoly, you know what the rules are. And that game can get really involved with the rules at various points. Uh, if you play any card game, you know what the rules are. And everybody has to abide by the rules. So I learned that, that in the process of developing a game and developing the rules beforehand, unfortunately, when you develop the rules, you kind of predetermine who's going to win the game. The player that, that follows the rules and plays to the strength of the rules is the one who will usually win the game. Well, when you begin to do research on anything, I don't care what it is, if you predetermine what your delineated area of research will be and what the terms of that research will be, you can pretty much determine where you're gonna go with it. So, if the beginning, and this was one of the beginning points of the Jesus Seminar is they discard all miracles. Miracles didn't happen. Jesus was the son of two human parents. Uh, Jesus did not turn water into wine. Somehow they got that wrong. 
And after having been in Napa just a few weeks ago, I can tell you those people don't get that wrong. They know the difference between wine and water. <laughs> and it ain't magic. <laughs> um, this is an argument that's been going on for, for, we need to understand, hundreds, thousands of years. There are two schools of thought. There's continuationism, which says that the gifts of the spirit, like speaking in tongues, healing, resurrecting people, whatever it is you want to call it, prophecy. Uh, continuationism school, or those who subscribe to it, say that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit as they were given in the apostolic period are the gifts that are given today, and they operate much in the same way. There is another school, however, that's called cessationism usually tied with words like dispensationalism, premillennialism, postmillennialism, all, all of that stuff. But basically what they argue is this. The gifts of the Holy Spirit that were granted to the, the apostles ceased to exist when the apostles went away because they were no longer necessary. My question was, why were they no longer necessary? We go back to something that I've talked about previously that they hold up the Bible and they say, because now we have the word of God and we don't need those. And I thought, well, that's kind of a truncated argument. In other words, you're saying this is the word of God and it is superior to any other revelation that we may receive via the Holy Spirit. So you kind of like put the Holy Spirit in a box. The Holy Spirit can only speak to us through the words of scripture and not through interaction with any human being. Oh, now that is an interesting rule, which I think Jesus kind of preempted when he said, you, 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 you feel the wind, you know that it comes from somewhere, but you don't know where it's going. The Holy Spirit's pretty much the same. You can't control it. As a matter of fact, when the Holy Spirit gets involved in anything, I've learned chaos usually <laughs> ensues, <laughs> which is very interesting. And for certain folks in the church, we don't like chaos. I was a Presbyterian for a long time. I can tell you, they do not like chaos. They have a whole book of order to prevent chaos. It comes down to one question. Do you believe in miracles or not? You may not believe in the virgin birth. It's not necessary for salvation. You may not believe that Jesus literally changed water into wine. You may not believe that a crowd of 5,000 people was fed on the basis of two little pieces of fish and five loaves. If you don't understand that, Rachel L. Evans says at one point, I got to a place where I didn't believe them either. But I didn't know how to communicate to people. I don't buy that stuff anymore. How can you not and call yourself a Christian? Well, I struggled with these very same things. I'm telling you. I didn't have the gift of healing. There were times when I wanted it so bad I could taste it but it wasn't granted to me. I think I had the gift of prophecy. My wife disagrees with me on that periodically. <laughs> but I believe I do have the gift of discernment. And that is a spiritual gift. It's listed in that book that they referred to that says we don't do that. And I know that there are other people who have the gift of preaching and teaching. Administration is listed as one of the spiritual gifts. I know, what a snoozer. But there it is. And in wrestling with this question, do I believe in these miracles or not? 
I came to this conclusion, and this may surprise many of you. <laughs> I do believe in one miracle that most certainly happened. Otherwise, I don't know of any reason why I would want to be a follower of the way. And that is that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. For me, it came to the point that what you're arguing with me if you're, if you're discarding all the miracles is that people in the first and second century could not distinguish between the truth and a lie. And I find that difficult to swallow. I think they did know the truth and they knew the difference between those two things. And I don't believe that between 12 people, <laughs> you can get them all to agree to tell the same lie long enough without somebody spilling the beans. I just don't buy it. Human nature tells us that's not so. So if people witnessed and said, I saw, I touched, I talked with, I walked with, I believe it's true. Do we have the questions that Janet sent? We, um, unfortunately, Janet also has the list of all everybody's emails. <laughs> <laughs> so she has been texted and wants to send them to everyone, but so far, I don't think that's happened. I think she's performing nursing duties at the present time. Um, so the questions. Do you want to, yeah, one at a time. Sure. 